Chemical equations are similar to equations in maths. They show an input and an output. The input on the left is the reactants. These are the chemicals we will be reacting together. And on the right side is the product, which is what we get after the reaction. Let's try to write an equation for water, H2O. There are some easy steps to follow. First, write the equation in words. Hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. Then add the formulae for the molecules. Hydrogen molecules are H2, oxygen is O2, and the water molecule is H2O. Can you see something is wrong with the equation? One of our oxygen atoms has disappeared. We can fix this by balancing the equation. Let's write a 2 in front of the water molecule. Now there's two oxygen atoms on each side. But now we've got two hydrogen atoms on the left and four on the right. Hydrogen atoms are just appearing from nowhere. One more step is needed to fix this. We will write two in front of the hydrogen molecule on the left. Now we have four hydrogen on each side and two oxygen on each side. Sweet. Let's now look at rates of reaction. Our chemical reactions can occur at different speeds. These reactions occur because the molecules are trying to share electrons to become more stable. There's two theories you need to think about when thinking about rates of reaction. The first is particle theory. This is about solids, liquids and gases, and the atoms, ions and molecules they're made from. Solids are made of particles that don't have much energy. They basically just vibrate on the spot. The particles that make up liquids have enough energy to slide around one another, but not enough to break away and fly off. But gas particles have heaps of energy and move around very quickly. Now let's think about collision theory. This is about how reactions occur when the reactants collide together. Combining this theory with particle theory, we can see that it's very unlikely that solid particles will collide with other particles because they don't move around. But gas particles move around heaps, and so collide into other particles all the time. The amount of collisions that occurs over time is the frequency of collisions. If reactants smash into each other with enough energy, they'll break apart and rearrange themselves into the product, a new molecule. This amount of energy is called activation energy, Ea. We need to think about the factors that affect reaction rates. To do this, we need to do some serious science. Coke and Mentos. On the left is our control. It's just chilled Coke with a couple of Mentos. I'll increase the rate of reaction if I increase the concentration of Mentos. That is, put more Mentos in. More particles of Mentos means that collisions between Mentos and Coke are more likely to occur. They'll happen at a higher frequency. I'll increase the rate of reaction if I increase the surface area of the Mentos. That is, if I crush them up so that the particles of Mentos are more exposed. If more particles are exposed, collisions happen more frequently, and less energy is required to break the Mentos apart. I'll increase the rate of reaction if I increase the temperature. That is, let the coke warm up a bit. Increasing the temperature lends more energy towards collisions, as hotter particles travel faster. Think how gaseous steam is hotter than liquid water and how it has more energy according to particle theory. The fourth thing I can do is use a catalyst. A catalyst is a chemical that lowers the energy barrier, that is, makes it easier for the reactants to break apart and rearrange to form the product. If it's easier for molecules to react, then it's more likely they'll react. Simple but true. Diet Coke has a catalyst in it that helps to break down the Mentos, making reactions easier. There's some key things to remember. Chemical equations need to be balanced so there are the same amount of atoms on both sides of the equation. Different rates of reaction occur because of how particles move in solids, liquids and gases, and how often they collide with each other and how hard. We can increase the rate of reaction by increasing concentration, temperature, surface area, and by adding catalysts.